Sandland, the land of sun. Yeah. Hello and welcome, it's Chris back with yet another fragrance review. And today we are featuring a personal selection of five fragrances from a very famous brand. And these have been selected according to my taste and my experience wearing them. Okay, so I'm not claiming that these are the best of the brand or there's nothing better than this of, of the lineup and all that. These are my favorite five of the brand according to my own taste and experience again. And brand, brand, what, what uh, brand am I talking uh, about? Well, very easy, famous. Francisco Rabaneda Cuervo. I said Francisca Rabaneda Cuervo. Comprende? Relax, I didn't go crazy, loony. Paco Gaban. That was just his real name, okay? Paco Gaban is the brand name and his name at this stage. Okay, Francisco Rabaneda Cuervo from Basque, from the Basque clan in Spain, born in 1934. And he became fairly quickly very well known in the fashion world. First, first he was around designing, I think, jewelry for Givenchy and Balenciaga. And then he rose to his own fame uh, with his own brand, Paco Gaban, starting in the 60s, doing, you know, outrageous clothing. He became the enfant terrible, the enfant terrible of the fashion world, okay? Because he used strange materials and strange designs. He used metal, for example, in, um, in, in, in women's clothing and that. Uh, I remember Jane Fonda wore, uh, wore a uh, strange green dress in, in one of the movies and that was by, made by Paco Rabanne and Jane Fonda is a great fan of Paco Rabanne as well as far as I know. And so yeah he went on to fly high very much so um, and uh, he went into the fragrance game at Paco Rabanne fairly early late 60s, I think, and there were great fragrances like Cologne for women, for example, or Tenere for men, um, which I could put into this list, um, but I have not worn, worn them really. I don't have a full bottle. I, I wouldn't be able to give you a comprehensive, genuine feedback on them. So this is why are, those ones are not featuring, okay? So, but we have to travel back in time. We have to travel back in time until 1973. When this one came out, Paco Rabanne Purum, the classy, the beautiful, the benchmark, I should say, for anything and everything that is aromatic green fougere. Okay, this was probably the first aromatic, real aromatic green fougere heavy hitter. Okay, 73. And this has everything that you want from, from that genre. Uh, it, it has that mossiness, it has that dirtiness, it has that freshness, it has that greenness, it has that soapiness, and it has a honey note that after two weeks of wearing is too much for me, a little bit, you know. So I wear this in the springtime, I always reach for it, I always get a new bottle. But after a while, two, three weeks, I can't, I, it's just too much. And then I leave it, and then comes the next spring, uh, next year, okay? so. That's how my rotation works with Paco Rabanne Purum, the eternal green aromatic fougere fragrance, a true benchmark, okay? Uh, spot number two, let's jump a few years on, 2001. Okay, well, look at this. Uh, ultraviolet, ultraviolet for men, um, 2001, okay? I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Jacques Cavalier was, was, the, was the parfumeur, but I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, the, the, the fragrance, I have it on here, the fragrance is absolutely stunning. It's, this fragrance, both in its smell and its design, is, is the closest uh, representing um, Paco Rabanne in, in his fashion, I think. And the reason is, in regards to the smell, it has this very uh, unique, totally extravagant, uh, never seen before smell, okay, uh, it, and it is very multifaceted. It has different faces every day and every, every, day, every time I wear it, okay. Sometimes it's, it's warm and, and vanillic, sometimes it's cold and metallic, sometimes it's mossy, uh, sometimes it's dry like a desert, like ooh, and sometimes it's actually there's a bit of sweetness in there. I love that because this is a great surprise every time, obviously positive surprise every time I wear it. Okay, great quality, great longevity, great, great performance, and um, 
overall a great, unique, standalone, signature Verti fragrance. So that's that. What that's one reason why it's a it's a true representative representative of Paco Gabbana's fashion. Also, the design of the bottle. I mean, come on. Definitely, it has this metallic, cold touch to it. And look at this sprayer. Embrace for impact. Fire! Oh, this was gorgeous. Another time. Fire! Brilliant. Uh, absolutely brilliant. So, uh, this is a joy to wear. Okay, again, signature worthy. Ultraviolet Man by Paco Raban. Okay. Um, 1993. Some claim 1994. I saw this, I think, in 1993, late 1993. Um, excess for man, okay? And I have it here. Sprayed it on earlier to, to just time travel. And I'm gonna tell you why that is. Ah, this is such an utter joy. And this version is the 2018 relaunch. But let me state one thing very clearly right now. They are the same. Fragrance smells the same. How do I know? I first wore this fragrance end of 90s, I think 99, and then again at a very memorable um, vacation in Dubai in March 2007, when I was um, uh, at the Jebel Ali Golf Resort, Hotel and Golf Resort, and I was spending the week there, and I had live appearances up on stage at the uh, Plantation Bar with the band, <laughs> with the local band, five nights in a row doing Elvis songs, just totally out of out of nowhere, as a surprise, it was it came to me. But uh, I had a great time uh, that March in Dubai, and every time I smell this, this reminds me of that. And the smell is so complex; it has the citrus, but with lots of uh, nice nuances of florals, woods, herbal uh, aspects, um, and, and it's very dense. It's it's very dense. The, the best impression I could give you is like uh, when you travel to a an exotic destination. Uh, where there's um, a desert around somewhere in the area um, and with the plane you travel there and you land and they open the door to the, toward the you know the gateway down the stairs down to the tarmac they open the door and you get hit by this desert air the hot desert air and it fills your pores fills your nostrils fills your mouth fills your everything okay this is how it smells to me a Totally unique smell, a, a, instant huge impression, positive, positive, okay? And something just utterly beautiful and you want to just go because it's so energetic. You just, you just want to go for it, okay? This is how it smells. Very good for casual, very good for formal. Again, great signature material. Excess pour homme. Um, and it's, and in, again, in its current uh, form, love this. You know, uh, it's just, I just go and spray it. No, come on. Absolutely stunning. I love this to bits. Looks even better now than it looked 25 years ago or 30 years ago almost. Okay, smells the same. Performance the same. Nothing's changed. Relax, uh, relax, okay? It smells absolutely stunning. Okay? Okay, spot number two. Paco Rabanne. Sport or Sport de Paco Rabanne, okay, 1986, ha! And this is a sports fragrance from the 80s, and it smells of pure and utter quality. I just keep smelling those other two fragrances because they're so good. Oh my God. Uh, oh yeah, but I have to smell this one. <laughs> These were great releases by Paco Rabanne, really like. What a shame that it has become the, the Maison and the brand that is today. Because after 2008, Paco Rabanne, in my opinion, I'm going to come to that. Ah, oh, woody, minty, green, citrusy, a bit soapy. And it has this je ne sais quoi, this, it's probably the mint and the greens, like, uh, and the woods, like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Another absolute beauty. It's so refreshing. It's one of the favorite fragrances uh, by Dan from Mr. Smelly, from Dan Norton from the Mr. Smelly channel. And this is really fresh green sports fragrance. Like you're, like you're in the 80s, 90s. Uh, absolutely beautiful. It's totally stands its ground today, in my opinion. And it has that mint, and it has those green citrusy aspects that make this just 
a perfectly re refreshing, not only sports fragrance, but springtime and summer fragrance, okay? Not that much suited for winter, um, and not necessarily suited for just only sports. It's a very, it's a very casual um, smelling fragrance, extremely nice. I mean, really, I mean, it, it made spot number two, okay? And it brings back some great, great memories from the early 90s to me, late 80s and early 90s, 89, and, and, um, 89 90, around that time. The Italian World Cup and all that. Oh yeah, Whew. masterpiece, eternal masterpiece. And last but not least, the best fragrance, in my opinion, Paco Rabanne has ever released was this one. Huh. And it's such a shame that this is discontinued. Um, this was released in 2002, I think it was. And it's it was called um, uh, the first Eau de Fougere, okay? They made, they were at, at Paco Rabanne at that time was so brave to, to say, okay, we're gonna bring the first Eau de Fougere. A fresh, masculine, authentic record, uh, accord, the first Eau de Fougere. Lavender, Palmarosa, Copayu, Cedar Moss, and Musk. And you can see there's barely anything left in the bottle. I have a one more uh, small 50 ml, um, but it, it's actually this see-through bottle, see-through juice inside. It's called Paco Rabanne Pour Homme O. I should show it in a way that it's visible. Paco Rabanne Pour Homme O, okay, water, and it's, and it's, uh, its appearance is, is clear, so it looks like water actually, and it kept the same or almost the same shape as the, you know as the previous ones. This one, and uh, it's just it's just the cleanest, nicest fragrance ever, uh, with a, with a character that is unmatched by 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 it's it's it's, it's barely matched by any fragrance. Any other fragrance, I really have to say. So my heart cries. This would be my absolute uh, signature if it would be out still today. They kill this mostly in in springtime and and uh, summertime. Although the first time I wore this, it was middle of winter. Uh, but it's just it's just stunning. Uh, it's clear cut. It's it is. But the musk is in there to give it a, a fantastic character. So it's not only your freshy, it, it has a tremendous take on fougere, uh, a, a crystal clear fougere. This is how I would probably um, describe this. So um, again, I wanted to say in regards to Paco Rabanne, while I'm trying to put these babies up there, that I always loved this brand uh, to bits. And it's a shame that it has become what it has become because after 2008, Paco Rabanne, in my opinion, just went downhill um, with the tremendously popular release of, of One Million and all his hundred million uh, flankers and all and Olympie and, and Invictus and all that sh shameful uh, stuff that came out. It's, sh it's I wouldn't well, it's shameful. It's probably not. You know, many people like it and that, but. It has just it has just not only taken the brand into a very uh, weird um, and, and somehow much less uh, quality oriented oriented and, and, and much much more uh, kitschy and, um, and 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 vulgar way. It's vulgar, uh, but vulgar in a in a non sexy way to me. It's vulgar in a in a tracksuit way, if you know what I mean. It's not worth. It's it's not just worth the, worthy the name, okay? This is today's Paco Rabanne is tracksuit worthy, okay? And that's I don't like that. That's not the enfant terrible that Paco Rabanne was in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s when when these were these were around. So I think that is that is a disgrace. So I don't I don't really go into uh, recent Paco Rabanne releases except for and I applaud them actually that they did a remake of this, um, reintroduced this in a nicer bottle. Uh, well, it looked the same, but it had a different kind of color. It's just more futuristic, more Paco Rabanne, I think, this version than the, than the vintage. So that is, a, that is a plus point, okay? Let's, let's not bash the, uh, the brand totally, okay? Let's stay positive and let's, let's look um, at all those uh, fragrances that are from Paco, Bra Paco Rabanne still out there. Obviously, some of them are still alive, some of them discontinued, and some of them relevant, okay? Thanks very much. This was Chris from Sandland with my favorite five from Paco Rabanne. Bye-bye.